It's February 2021 right now, and I haven't gotten my hair done since February 2020. This has been me for the last three months. Well, realistically, the last year. I now know why there is a thing called a mom haircut. So I don't ever style it because it looks like this. It's so thin that the longer it gets, the thinner it starts to look. I feel like such a trashy scrub. Never have felt worse about myself. Confidence at an all time low. And I need to feel good about myself again. So 12 weeks postpartum today. And here is what we are working with. Beautiful. All right, so here's the before. Hey guys, so today I am going to be filming a video that I thought would be, I don't know, just kind of chill and fun for me because I get a feel good at the end of it. And I thought I would do the outfits, makeup, and hair that make me feel the most beautiful. I always like to see what people feel the most beautiful in. I find it really interesting. Like sometimes for people, it's like full glam. I mean, they want to be in like a tight fitting dress or a tight fitting outfit with their hair super done. Or some people it's like really undone. They want to look like they completely did not try. Some people it is like a sundress outside. And some people like me, it's overalls and a white shirt with my hair loosely curled and a face of pretty bronzy makeup. That's what we're gonna do today. And I thought it would be fun to add in the old footage as you saw from right before I had gotten my hair cut and colored and I was just feeling the lowest that I had felt in a really long time. Postpartum plus feeling, just like not myself. My hair was so super grown out and it was too long, it was scraggly. And after I had my baby, was showering so little, but I was also not brushing my hair as much as I could. It was just ending up in a pony and a bun all day long. And then when I would would finally get the luxury of a shower, my hair was so matted that I would have to sit there and like de-mat it for a really long time. And I was just like, there is no point to this anymore. Your hair. <laughs> it's so matted. It's literally some, yeah. it's gonna be a beautiful experience. I wasn't taking care of myself and I just didn't feel good about myself. So I just wanted to do something completely different. I've been blonde since 2016. 16, I believe. So it was time for a change and I am so, so glad, so glad that I decided to go brunette. So glad that I decided to chop it. I'm very thin, fine hair. So the shorter and darker, the more full it looks. Today I am going to do my makeup and my hair the way that makes me feel the prettiest. I'm already wearing the outfit that I love the most. Honestly, this outfit is my number one. Like if you could pick an outfit for me to feel the cutest and prettiest in, it's this one here. It's a long sleeve white shirt. This is from Target and then some overalls. These are from Amazon and they are motherhood maternity. They have these little side panels. I'm only wearing the maternity ones because I have them and I really like them, but these ones kind of come in at the waist. It almost like gives me shape. I I have, I'm an apple body shape, which you don't see a lot of online. A lot of times when you see people's body shapes, they are a hourglass or a pear shape. And for me, I'm an apple. So I have the majority of my weight is like face, upper body, and then I have like kind of smaller legs. Because your butt isn't big and your belly is larger, pants just fall down. Unless they are like the most high-waisted. And when I say that, I mean like literally right under your boobs, they fall down. So that's why I love overalls because I don't have to be pulling them up constantly. I don't have to mess with them. Once they're clipped on, that's it. I'm just good to go. So I'm gonna start off with my hair and I'm so excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Playa. If you don't know who Playa is, they are a hair care brand that I've been using for the last two and a half, three months. So they reached out and asked me if I wanted to try out their products and I said, absolutely. I'm always willing to try any new brand. They sent me over a bunch of different products to try and today I'm gonna be demoing out a few of them for you. I have had so many people ask me how I've kept my hair so shiny and healthy. I will say that I feel like the main product that has made the biggest difference in my hair is Playa's Healing Hair Mask. So I use their everyday shampoo every day. I use the conditioner as well, but the Healing Hair Mask is where I've noticed the biggest difference. I do exactly as the directions say. I don't massage it into my scalp, but I do go all the way up to my scalp and I mostly work it on the ends of my hair and I let it sit, they say five to eight minutes. I definitely do like eight to 10 minutes. And I like it because it 
honestly makes my hair feel so soft at the end. It feels so healthy and strong. And I noticed that my hair has like a really beautiful bounce to it. And it's just shiny and really healthy feeling after using this product. It's got kaolin clay in it, which is good for decongesting. So if you have like a lot of product buildup in your hair, it helps to clear out the residue from your scalp. And it also helps nourish the ends of your hair and make them feel really, really soft. Like Zach even noticed a difference when he was running his fingers through my hair. He was like, wow, your hair feels really soft. Cut and color helped with that as well because my hair was feeling so scraggly from the blonde. You know how your hair feels good after a cut, but even maintaining that like a couple months after, it still feels really, really nice. So most of the time I let my hair air dry. If I'm running short on time, I will blow dry my hair this morning. I let it mostly air dry and then I just ran a blow dryer through it at the very end just to make sure that it was fully dry for this. Ply is a clean brand that's dedicated to being sustainable and the products are really natural and luxurious feeling. I love the packaging so much. You guys have given me so many compliments when you see me do my hair this way. And a lot of you guys have been asking Asking, and I wanted to continue trying out the products beforehand to make sure that I could give you guys like a good demo on how I use everything. So I'm just gonna jump into it and I'm gonna show you how I do my hair. So I'm not somebody that uses fancy curling irons, never have been. This is just a Conair, I think it's a, maybe a half inch, but I don't think it's a half inch. I think it's like a, like it's, it's a smaller curling iron and I'll try to find this one online, but I've had it for so long. I don't do anything special when curling my hair. I find that if I go with a little bit of a smaller barrel, then I have better results because it's fine and thin. If I do a larger barrel curling iron, my hair falls out way faster. So I like to go in with a little bit smaller and then brush it out and then it makes it look a lot more effortless. So this is literally how I curl my hair. And all I do is just go in and I grab sections and I don't section my hair off because I have fine thin hair. And I do use the little clamp. A lot of people don't and they just like wrap curl their hair. I used to do that too, but I just wrap it like that and I leave the end out and then I sort of tug on it at the end. So it looks like this. It's gonna look Shirley Temple-ish until we brush it out at the end and style it. And then it looks so much more effortless. So then I just grab another chunk like up here at the top. And this is like the fast, I don't have a lot of time. So I need to curl my hair like the shortest amount of time possible. And I leave about that much out at the end because if you have, the ends straight, it just looks a little more like beachy and effortless. I don't know, I just don't want it to ever look like I have like prom hair. And I'll curl them mostly all away from my head. This is my like actual, I can do this hair if I'm not talking in less than five minutes. And then the other side, I do the exact same thing. I curl the front away and I do middle part. I lately am really liking a middle part, not because Gen Z would make fun of me, but maybe also a little bit because of that. Okay, so once my hair looks like this, this is as curled as it's going to get, then what I do is I take a brush and I brush it out. I like it to be nice and soft. I don't want the curls to be like defined at all. So if that's the case, what I do is I honestly just take my curling iron and kind of run over it gently like that and just kind of loosen them up a little bit. To add some texture and a little more like beachiness to this look, I'm going to go in with the Endless Summer Spray from Playa. So the way you're gonna wanna use this is hold it six inches from your hair and just mist it right in. And then you can kind of scrunch and tousle your hair and it gives you like that wavy look and enhances the volume of your hair. It says here that the formula enhances the natural bend in your hair to create waves and even out curl patterns. And unlike most salt sprays, this one uses pure cane sugar instead of alcohol. So your hair will stay soft and not crunchy, stiff or sticky. And I do notice that my hair definitely stays soft with this. I've used some salt sprays that make my hair feel extremely sticky and I would not say that this one does that at all. And then I like to take a bit of the Ritual hair oil and then I put a pump of this into my hands, rub my hands together. And when I rub it into my hair, you wanna make sure that at least for me, that I am not overdoing it with this product. You, it's not easy to do because this product is really nice. It doesn't make your hair feel like really um, wet or super slick. It just adds a really nice shine and smell. It smells so good. And I just run my fingers right through my hair and you can apply it from root to tip, whatever you wanna do, but I mostly focus this on the ends of my hair to keep them really shiny. You can use this if you want a sleek pony, if you are wanting to smooth out some baby hairs, if you wanna add texture for like that more like beachy undone look as well. I like to tease the bottom a little bit. I feel like a lot of people tease the top of their hair, 
but then it gives you like that really big crown. But if you just take a brush and sort of gently back comb your hair, that's like the key to how I give my hair body. And then I just like, after I do that, I just sort of take my brush and like gently go over the top. And this is my everyday hair. If you've ever wondered how I've been doing it, this is how I do it every single day. Well, that I, that I have time. Every single day, my ass. But every single day that I do my hair, this is how I do it. If you guys are interested in checking out the brand, I'm gonna have them linked in the description down below and I'll have all of the products that I use linked down there as well. They have a lot of different stuff that you guys can check through, but I really, really like these. And I just find that since I've started using these, I really love the way my hair looks and you guys have been complimenting it a lot, which I really appreciate because mama was feeling bad about herself. <laughs> Thank you so much to Playa for working with me on today's video and let's move on to the makeup and show you what I have been doing to feel the prettiest. So I've already taken a shower and I exfoliated a bit, not enough. I don't know what to do, you guys need to let me know. So I received the Desi skincare, the Claro KC. I received it in the mail and I wanna give it a try. I have heard through some people that vitamin C's can make you break out. I'm really not looking forward to that, but I have to do something for skincare. I haven't done anything in probably a year and a half. I haven't done anything, like moisturizer only when I wear makeup. And uh, I really wanna do something. I wanna just have like a nice, beautiful skincare routine. I've heard about the Ordinary Bee Oil. Do you guys know anything about that? All of this skincare stuff is just really overwhelming to me. I don't know how to do any of it. I just, I don't know. So if you guys can tell me, like I need a routine, but I need it to be like three products or less and make a big impact, but not break me out. Is Am I asking too much? <laughs> Probably. Okay, so for my foundation, what I have been doing lately is what you guys have seen me do in the last few videos. And that is I've been mixing the Auric Glow Lust in with the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. And the Auric Glow Lust color that I've been using is the color Selenite. And this is the color that I've been using, which is MN6. Now this is a bit deeper than my skin tone, but when I mix the two, I feel like the color is a pretty decent match. So I use about half a pump of the Auric just about that much on my hand. And then I use about a pump and a half of the Pure Foreign one. And then I mix it up with my brush handle. Just easy like that. Mix them together. Put a couple of dots on my face. This combination has been beautiful. I freaking love it. It literally is such a stunning combination. The coverage is lovely. So I've been applying it with my brush this is the It Cosmetics Love is a foundation brush. I've been loving this for literally years. So if you guys are looking for it, I know that they did release it again. They release it every single year and um, they should just keep it forever, honestly. But they do a re-release of it every year and it looks like this was the exact brush they released last year. The year before they had put one out that was flat topped and it was completely different. This one is amazing. It has the rounded top and it's such a good brush. So everyone always asks like, what brush is that? This is just, it's just the best. There's something so special about it. So it, love is a foundation brush. Just, you can see this coverage of this is so stunning. It looks amazing because the Love Your Selfie foundation is so full coverage, but when you mix it in with the Auric, it adds the most beautiful glow to the skin. It doesn't look dry at all. So if you're dry like me at all, you might love, love, love this combo. And I do bring it down on my neck a bit because the color isn't my exact match. The only thing is I hate wearing makeup is that when I kiss my baby, he gets like little flecks of sparkles all over his face or makeup on him. And I hate that. But you gotta get used to it, baby. Mama does beauty videos. So that is what I do. And then I wet this sponge. I don't even know what sponge this is. I feel like it's a ColourPop sponge, but I'm not sure. And I just tap it over just to get any excess product off my skin. And lately for concealer, I've been using the same product, the foundation, but I've just been putting a lighter shade of it because it is a foundation and concealer in one. And I've just been putting it right here a little bit. And then I bring that up on my eyes as well. And today I am going to use a bit of setting powder because my under eyes have been looking a little, it's almost like, okay, I'll show you what I mean. Before I set anything, you can see how you can see my under eye bag. When you use a little tiny bit of powder, I just noticed that it sort of makes that disappear and it just makes me look a little bit younger. I don't know. <laughs> Am I kidding myself? Probably. So I'm gonna use a little, little, little bit of powder and today I'm actually gonna use the Huda Beauty Banana Bread Powder. Whew. So heavily scented, it makes me gag. But I'm tapping off the majority of the powder on the back of my hand. I'm just gonna use like the tiniest little bit. Okay, you see what I mean? How as soon as I put that powder on, it just 
It almost like blurs this area and makes it sort of disappear. I'm not baking by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, that was good. That was what I needed. I'm just taking a little bit of that powder up there. I want the rest of my face to be glowy, so I'm not gonna powder my face at all, but just my under eyes, I feel like it makes such a big difference. So that is the skin. I'm gonna let that sit for a bit while I finish off the rest of my face. I'm gonna do my brows real quick, and this is the product that I've been using nonstop, and I haven't put it back down. I love it. Honestly, all kind of brow pencils are my favorite. This I really do like. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Espresso, um, but I also really like the M Cosmetics one. I like the Hourglass one. I like uh, the CoverGirl one is really really good there's something so fast about them my brows used to be something that i would spend the uh, most amount of time on and now it's like if i can't do it in like 35 seconds it's like be, be done so that's as much as i'll ever do to my eyebrows ever again be, just simply be eyebrows i should just get them microbladed but i'm a giant wiener i don't know i just can't do it i'm too afraid i'm not afraid of the pain whatsoever couldn't care less about the pain i am just super nervous that they'll come out and i'll get done and be like Sharpie brows, you know? I don't want that. I'd rather just take the 35 seconds and do this. Bada bing, bada boom, done. Okay, so for bronzer, if I'm going off of the thing that makes me feel the prettiest is having a really bronzed up face, not too much bronzer, obviously, but this is the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light, which I really love. And I love to take it all over my cheeks, but you guys know this about me. If I'm trying to feel my personal prettiest, I love to take the bronzer right here on the bridge of my nose. It might look crazy at first, but when the whole face is done, I feel like it just makes you look so sun-kissed and pretty. And this is like, if I were to have an ideal face of makeup right now that I would do every single day, like if I could just wake up and have a face of makeup on, this is the face of makeup that I choose. This is how you know what favorite products you have. When you have a short amount of time, which ones do you reach for the most? And these are them. And I might overkill it on the bronzer for some people on my, the bridge of my nose, but you know, everyone has their own thing. I would be really interested to know what is the look that makes you feel the most confident? Would it be something a little more natural? Is it something full glam? Like, is it a red lip? For me, I get like almost self-conscious when I wear makeup like that. I just feel like I'm on display for the world. And things change, like what made me feel confident two years ago, dude, could not be further from what it is today. Things just change so much with each passing year. And I would have never thought that it would have been a white t-shirt and freaking overalls for me. But it is, I'm a garden mom, what can I say? So then I like to take a little bit of blush. This is the blush that I've been really liking lately and this is called Faded Clementine from M Cosmetics. The color of this, it's just so good. It's so good. It's like bronzy, but at the same time just adds a little hue of like a peachiness. So pretty. I love this whole collection that she came out with, this little palette. This is the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette and this is what the packaging looks like. And I've gotten a decent amount of use out of this as well. It's really small, it's compact. I feel like it's just stunning. And the colors of this little palette, look at that. It's just something that I feel like I reach for it quite a lot. And I really just like the size of it. It's something you could quickly toss in your bag if you needed to. Not that I do, I don't go anywhere, but if you needed to. But I'm always really into like the peachy, bronzy, glowy, I mean, if you couldn't tell. But this blush is sort of bronzery in a way. It reminds me sort of of like Milani Luminoso. But oh God, it's just so pretty. And it is that really faded color. It's not really brightly pigmented at all. So I know that this might look a little crazy, but I just feel like when the whole look comes together, it looks so pretty. I'm gonna go in with the Auric Glow Lust in Selenite again. And I'm just going to tap that on my cheeks. This is what I've been doing every day since I tried it in that video, which if you didn't watch the video, I'll link it here. And it, it just truly is my favorite. It's probably my favorite product of the month. And I don't just say that because I'm friends with the owner of the company, Sam. It is seriously so, so beautiful. And I love the way it blends my makeup together. As you can see, when I use this, it just like creates the most beautiful natural glow that I can't get from any other product without looking overkill. Like a powder highlighter just can't look like this. I love the way that it sits over my makeup, over powder, over everything. It just, it doesn't pick up my foundation, doesn't pick up any of the product beneath it. It's just so, so beautiful. And since I started using this, I have felt like my makeup routine is so fast and looks twice as good. Let me take a little down the bridge of my nose and kind of 
just everywhere that I want to kind of pop out and highlight, I toss this on. And because you're adding that like glow over the top of the bronzery product, it just sort of tones everything back down. I think maybe because these have a bit of pigment in them, it does. It just looks so pretty. I take a bit down here on my chin, and then I do a little bit right here. How fast that application was, it just pulls the whole look together. For my eyes, I'm actually gonna use my palette that I did with ColourPop. And this is the At For A Sight palette. And I am going to use the shade Puffball up here. This is like my ideal favorite shade. I'm gonna take it on a big fluffy brush. This is the Soft Crease Brush from Makeup Addiction. If you don't have the ColourPop palette, you don't have to use it obviously, but any sort of kind of mustardy, tawny brown shade will do. If you got my palette with Pure, a color that would be kind of similar to this might be Camelot. So if you um, wanted to try a color that you might have if you didn't get this palette. Otherwise, I mean, honestly, finding a color like this isn't extremely difficult. It's just like a really pretty kind of mustardy tawny brown shade. And I sort of focus it on the inner and outer to do like a little halo eye situation and then just sort of gently blend the two together like that. And then I run a little bit of it underneath my eye. I can't even believe it. I always thought that I would be, for my whole life, somebody that wore lashes. I really did. I thought that I was gonna wear false lashes till the day I die. I thought that I'd be sitting there 87 years old wearing cocoa lashes risque. But you know what? There's something about my natural lashes these days. I can't even believe I'm saying this. Who have I become? But there's something about my natural lashes these days that I just I don't hate, man. I like them. I feel confident in them. And I'm embracing the fact that getting ready takes me half the time because I'm not having to sit there and wait for lash glue to dry. So I don't wanna do any shimmer on my eyes right now. I'm just feeling more of the matte look. So I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the powder from Huda Beauty that I put under my under eyes because I need like a lighter shade, but I don't want to put any sort of shimmer. I wanna keep it matte and I'm just going to sort of tap that right on the center. Probably not a good idea since this is super scented. You can use an eyeshadow obviously, but I just wanted to use what I had in front of me. And I'm gonna use a bit of my liner from ColourPop as well. You can use any brown liner that you have. This is the shade Woodsy. So if you did get the collab, then great. If not, any brown liner will do. ColourPop has other brown liners or other brands do like Flower Beauty has one. There's lots of different choices out there. Every time I do a brown liner, I remember there's a look, some looks that I did back in the day where I did like a brown wing. Those are some of my favorite looks I've ever done like to date. There's just something about the warmth of brown eyeshadow and brown wing, brown mascara, etc. that just, it's good. Now I am going to curl my lashes and throw on some mascara. Same as always, CoverGirl Exhibitionist Waterproof Mascara is my number one. It's just my favorite right now. If you guys have any recommendations for a favorite waterproof mascara that I might really like, let me know. The CoverGirl Exhibitionist one just lasts really, really well on me and it keeps my lashes completely upright. I mean, they, they literally don't move. So I would love to know if you guys had any recommendations for ones that you guys really like because that this one, I mean, it's inexpensive, so I'm happy to keep using it, but I'd love to try others. It has to be waterproof though, because for me, that's the only thing that'll make my lashes actually stay. I feel like my judgment for like, do I like this makeup is like, if I ran into somebody from high school when I was out and about, would I feel like, yeah, you think I'm good looking? Or would I be like, damn it, I look like Trunchbull. Like for me, lately, I've been living in like Trunchbull vibes. This morning, you should have seen me. My hair in like the, the craziest bun you've ever seen. I needed this today, I really did. And I do mascara my lower lashes because I like the whole eye to look like completely finished. It's just crazy. I never thought I would be somebody that would feel confident without false lashes on. It just takes a little bit of time or just, I don't know. And maybe I'll completely go back. I wonder if I will. I just wonder if this is why as people get a little bit older, you're like, how come you don't glam anymore? And they're like, this is glam for me. And they just have on like a light coat of clear mascara and you're like, what? But I just always wondered. I never thought I would be somebody that would feel comfortable without lashes ever in my life, ever. And now I prefer it right now, we'll see. But I think that the majority of you guys watching probably don't wear lashes on the daily. I actually have noticed like back in the day when I was um, doing tutorials and I would throw a big pair of lashes on, people were requesting lashless videos all the time. They're like, I don't wear those to work or I don't wear those out. It's just too much for my eye. And so is it more helpful to you to see looks without them or do you prefer 
the finished look with them. Does it feel unfinished to you as a viewer watching somebody just do mascara or does it feel way more accessible to you because that's what you do, you know what I mean? That's it for the eyes, done and done. And then for my lips, big shocker, gloss. Any lipstick that you have that is like a neutral color, but I always use Mochalicious. The reason I'm hesitant to use it on camera or anything like that anymore is because I'm pretty sure that Wet n Wild is no longer cruelty free. I need to do more research into that. I've seen it posted differently, different places. But of course, the brand is always gonna be like, yes, we are. And then when you do more research, it's like, but are you? I'm using up what I have of products, but that's the thing is like, I don't wanna promote anything that's not. When I use gloss normally, it depends on the day. My favorite gloss hands down ever, ever, ever is Lunar Beauty's Dreamy Gloss. I can't find it right this second. So I a close second for me is the Patrick Ta. She's expensive, which honestly, my gloss that I came out with ColourPop in Glacier looks nearly identical. It's a very, very similar gloss and I love both of them. Today, I'm gonna use my gloss I did with ColourPop in Wildflower um, just because I feel like it's really pretty. But I'm a gloss ass bitch. For me, a look is not complete until I have a gloss. Like I just need it in my heart. The reason I like Lunar Beauty's Dreamy so much is because it is so comfortable to wear. It is not sticky at all. It's like a lip oil. I wanna try Freck, I need to give it a go, but I'm gonna do some faux freckles today because that is another step that just makes me feel the absolute cutest is when I have just a little bit of freckles. Plus it being like really sun-kissed over here, it just looks really cute. I love a good faux freckle. I don't do a ton anymore. I just do a few right here on the bridge of my nose. Just like that. Then I'm going to take and zhuzh out my hair a bit. And this is the finished look. My chair, so sexy. All right, you guys, this is the finished makeup and hair and outfit. This is my number one. If I wanna feel the cutest, this is what I do. I just feel like it looks really summery and pretty and beachy and effortless while at the same time like cute. I feel really beautiful in it. And I just like, this is my ideal. If I could look like something every day, this is what I pick to look like. And it's fast and it doesn't take a ton of products and I just really love it. I love my hair as well. A lot of people ask me, what color did you ask for? I showed her these images that you can see up on the screen here. I just said, I want short, blunt cut, and brunette. I wanted to have some warmth in it and I wanted some face framing highlights on the very front. I mean, it was just very, very simple. I know that she did use like a more warm toned color deposit underneath on the blonde and then did like a richer, shinier, deeper. I think she did use like a level four to six on my like brown color of my hair. So it's a lot darker, but it, really lightened up. She used a demi-permanent, so if I ever wanted to go back to blonde that I could, I don't think I'm going to. This is way more low maintenance and way more my speed these days. She's absolutely right. As time has gone on, these little blonde pieces that she added in the front here have lightened up, but it's like in a really pretty warm way. They don't look green at all, which can happen when you go from blonde to brunette color. This is the finished look, and this is how I feel the most beautiful. And I would love to know what is your ideal. If you guys tag me on Instagram, you can show me like what you feel the most beautiful in, I would really love that. Each person is just individual and whether that be something like ballroom glam or whether that be like garden mom chic, we all have our own personal preferences and this is mine. And I hope you guys liked this video and that it was somewhat kind of fun to hang out. I thank you again so much to Playa for sponsoring this video and for partnering with me, supporting my channel. If you guys are interested in checking out Playa, I will have them in the description of this video, but I've really loved all of the products that I've tried from them and I use them every single day. And I genuinely really, really like them. Specifically, the hair mask is my number one. If I could recommend one thing to you, it's gonna be the hair mask and I really also really like the ritual hair oil, but I really like everything that I showed you guys today. I will also have all of the makeup that I used down in the description and for any products that are no longer available, I will try to link some dupes as well or things that are close and similar like to my ColourPop products. Um, I'm not sure if they're ever coming back, but if they ever do, I will let you guys know on my other social medias. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at my next one.